Hi, it's Casual Fridays with Two Germanics. Today we're spending the day with Dan Lombard. Thank you for having me. Today we'll be spending the day with Dan Lombard, he's a sports journalist. We'll be watching the South Africa vs Malaysia Bowls game and thereafter we'll be spending some time with his family. It's not just, just straight, you don't just bowl your bowl straight to the white bowl, it's a little bit more tricky. <laughs> so basically, um, you, I mean, you, you basically have to get the ball closer, as close to each other, but there's some skill. If the ball is uh, heavier on the one side and not on the other side, then it's basically going to take some, it's always basically you know, how good your wrist is. So when you, you were a sports journalist, so you focus on... Do you, you, you actually cover many sports or certain types of sports? Well, it depends on who I'm working for. My main magazine, Game On Magazine, mm -hmm. where I'm assistant editor, we do all sports. That's why we were at the polls. I've yeah. done a hockey interview this year already. Uh, earlier in the week, I did an ice hockey interview. So nice. we cover a lot of up and coming people, a lot of established people, mm -hmm. but we also see ourselves as not elitist. Mm -hmm. So we don't just focus on the guys who've already made it. We yeah. do a lot of youngsters, schools and universities. That's actually our target market. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, because I broke my neck playing rugby, I'm, I'm very passionate about the game. So I do do a lot of work, rugby specific, like the Varsity Cup and mm -hmm. uh, Super Sport and the Bulls. Mm -hmm. So it's just about rugby is my main lab and that's what I like to focus on. So I generally get the rugby articles in Game On magazine. But yeah, we do cover pretty much everything. As long as a South African is doing it, we'll cover it. Yeah. You spoke about your broken neck in rugby. Like, can you go through it? Like, what happened? Well, in 2008, um, the 13th of May, when I was in Matric at Pretoria Boys, I was involved in a practice match. We were, well, actually it was a captain's run. We were supposed to play Husko Kharsfontein the next day. Mm. Sorry, Husko Alderain the next day. And, um, yeah, basically I just broke from the back of the, of the line out, went down to tackle the scrum off. And in that process, my head ended up in the wrong place and the ruck collapsed forward onto me. Yeah. And pretty much the rest is history. Broke my neck, broke my neck, uh, C4-5, severing my spinal cord, so that left me a quadriplegic. Yeah. It's very good. With my, with my condition, um, I must get this because it's quite progressive. I couldn't... I stopped the ability to push myself, to feed myself, and, and I can't, couldn't write anymore, so it was progressive. But yours must have been instant. How was the adjustment? Yeah, look, I mean, it was pretty instant. It was basically three cracks and instant paralysis. But, um, I mean, you, you go into extensive rehab just after you break your neck. So they go through things where they will teach you about bowel movement and you're, you're you know, going to the toilet and mm -hmm. they cover everything, pressure sores, sex life, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, the public yes. and then the pressures of being disabled. So, I mean, it was, I always see it as, as, as a flick of a switch. Mm -hmm. You either accept it or you don't. Yeah. There's no adjustment period for me the way I see it. Mm -hmm. If it happens to you, then you need to accept or not. It, because if you don't accept it, you cannot move forward. True. So, for me it was just, I said that day, as soon as, I mean I broke my neck on a Tuesday, I had my operation on Wednesday night, I was out of ICU on Thursday, I sat in my first wheelchair the following Monday. Sure. So I was, because I think it's because I was so fit, because I was playing second and thirds at Boys Out, mm. but I broke my neck at a fourth and fifth practice, mm. but I was pushing obviously to play first team. So, I was extremely fit when I broke my neck, which I think helped me a lot. Yes. But I mean, obviously it was very difficult because when I first broke my neck, I couldn't use my arms at all. My biceps were paralyzed as well. And they slowly came back. So having my biceps have given me a lot more freedom because I can drive myself with my hand mm -hmm. and, you know, um, shake people's hands and stuff. So I'm not just sitting dead still in a wheelchair anymore, which I think helps a lot. So. Um, I mean, as soon as I came off the morphine and I could think straight, I, the first thing I told my dad was I'm going back to school as soon as I'm out of hospital, which is what I did. I went to 
both my metric dance and the metric dance of my girlfriend at the time. It's awesome. I wrote, luckily my headmaster at the time was very well established in the, in the Department of Education, so I didn't have to write too many exams, including maths, which was a godsend because I sucked at maths. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, other than that, it was pretty simple. It's dealing, adapting to my disability is more, I think it's been tougher for the people around me than it has been for me. Mm. Because they all, I mean, I, I can't even remember what it's like to walk anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's been so long that I don't even think about that anymore. So, Whereas my dad obviously yeah. knows what it was like. He's got memories of me playing rugby and surfing and playing on the beach and stuff like that. So I think it's been harder for them. And the adaption, the adaption between helping yourself to now having someone to assist you, was that like... Look, one of the first things that they teach you in hospital is that when you're disabled, or when you're paralyzed, you lose two things. Yeah. Your privacy and your independence. True. And it's, like I just said, I accepted everything as it came. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I lost, I lost my privacy and I've lost my independence. So, I have to, I have to, you know, I need people's help. So, I can't really, it's either I don't get helped and I don't do anything, or I get helped and carry on with my life. So, it's pretty straight, I'm pretty straightforward when it comes to my disability. I know that I need people and um, I think that's one of the reasons why I became disabled if I reflect back on it because I was very selfish when I was able-bodied yeah. and I was very I thought I could take on the world by myself mm -hmm. and my disability has proved that you can't even if you're able-bodied you can't it's very difficult to do it when, when you think you can take on the world by yourself so I think my disability has taught me to um, understand a lot of things about life a lot of things about life that Many youngsters my age don't understand. Any, any challenges that you go through? Look, I mean, obviously there's, there's the, the usual challenges, you know, going to a, a place that has only steps and not lifts. Um, you know, people not giving you to work because you're disabled. You know, people looking at you funny, those sort of things. But I don't really have challenges that I see every day that I deal with, you know. It's, I take stuff in my stride and I and I just ex adapt as I go along. So, I mean, obviously I, I've suffered from pressure sores, which is not nice because you've been in a bed for, for a certain amount of time. I mean, your health is always at risk, you know, you've got capital infections and stuff like that. But those are, you know, those are part and part of the disability. So, there's not any challenges that stand out for me that I suffer from, you know, or that, 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 suffer, that affect me in any way, outside from the usual things that I have to deal with. Uh, yes, that's uh, casual Fridays with two Javonics. We will be there. Uh, and we'll see you on next Friday. Would you like to give a shout out there? Guys, just remember there's two hashtags that I use. Accept, adapt, achieve and forever strong. Keep that in your mind at all times and you will be able to conquer the world, believe me.